Hey, it's Matt from Custom Car Grills here with a grill delete and mesh install video for the 2024 and newer Mustang GT. In this video, I'm going to show you how to cut and sand your grill as well as how to do a mesh install afterward. It all starts by removing the grill from the bumper and we'll be making a perimeter cut on the back of the grill for the center and then the sides to end up with a hollowed out grill. Let's flip this grill around to work on it from the back. On the lower edge, there's a tab for a guide pin as well as two clips for the bumper support that need to be removed for this mod. To cut these off, I'll grab my Dremel and equip it with their number 543 cutting and shaping wheel. The center guide pin tab is easily cut off from the bottom like so. I'm cutting it pretty close to the edge, but you can leave a tiny bit of it and sand it down later if you're not comfortable cutting that close. The support tabs are better cut with the Dremel coming down from the top as I'm showing here. For the main big cuts, I want to cut the back at a fixed depth and there's no better way to do that than by using a tape line. On this grill, I'm using a tape that's exactly a half inch wide. We want to have the edge of the tape on the back edge of the grill. When we're done, we're going to be left with a clearly defined cut line that's at a fixed depth. It's important to use a half inch tape because the mesh set is designed with that in mind and cutting it at a different depth may require some adjustments to the mesh pieces. When it comes to the top edge, there are deep and shallow spots and I'll be placing the tape line so that it's butted up to the back of the deep areas. The mesh is going to have a half inch bent edge in this area, so it's important to also have a half inch or more left on the top edge so that we don't have a gap. Go ahead and prepare the side sections using the same method. The same fixed depth across all sections is going to be key to having the openings look right. With some of the rounded corners, you might need to break up the tape into multiple smaller pieces in order to get the contour correct. Here's a peek at how my tape line looks. Overall, I feel like this is a nice, crisp, and well-defined line to cut on. There looks to be full coverage, and I think we're ready to move on to cutting out the stock mesh. I'm using the same number 543 cutting wheel as before and I'm cutting from behind the grill with the wheel cutting right on the edge where the tape meets the grill. It's important to have a steady hand from here on out. While we can work out uneven spots later on, we don't wanna mess with the depth too much and it's best to get a good quality cut on the first pass. The top edge especially needs to not be cut any more than what the half inch tape line allows. And again, we need that half inch left on the top edge so that the mesh doesn't have a gap. Let's now make a cut on the side to connect up those bottom and top edge sections that we just did. And now, with all the proper cuts made, the center section can be lifted out and thrown away. There's going to be some burnt on plastic bits from the cutting process, and many of those can be picked off by hand, but don't be surprised if some of them are stuck on for now. Next up, let's work on the sides. When I get near the corners, I'll just slow down a little bit so that I don't overcut these corners. Then resume the cut after I made the turn and start working to the next corner. On the outer edge of these sides, the half inch tape works great to retain the full triangle cutout with a little light that connects up to each of them. Once the cut's gone all the way around the side, then the stock grill design can be lifted out and thrown away. There will yet again be some burnt on bits where the cuts were made and big ones should come up pretty easily. Now let's turn to getting the remaining smaller bits off. I took some 180 grit sandpaper and wrapped it on a long, flat sanding block. This will not only get rid of those pesky burnt on bits, but also level out any small unevenness we might have from the cutting process. Okay, here's a look at my grill with the final cuts and sanding done. The fact that we cut everything at a fixed depth gives the newly cut grill a very professional look. It looks like it was a part that was made from the factory like this. The grill that I've been working on here was sourced earlier on from Ford and only came primed. To show you how this looks with a gloss black frame, let's go ahead and head to the paint shop and in a snap, then we have it swapped over. This is now ready for the mesh installation, so let's take a quick look at the mesh set that we have for sale on our website. The mesh pieces are pre-cut and pre-bent specifically for the 2024 and newer Mustang GT as shown in this video. We're using a quarter inch hexagon, which has a high open area percentage, yet a small opening, which is great for radiator protection. These are made from aluminum and finished off in a gloss black powder coat. 
To install the mesh, let's first flip the grill face down. With the bent tabs on the mesh facing forward, the pieces should lay into place with relatively close contact to the grill edge. And while we get the bends on these mesh pieces pretty close to the edge, some may be slightly over or under bent. So there will be a need for some minor adjusting of the bends for optimal contact and fitment. After you're satisfied with the placement, grab some cable ties and foam, and then I'll meet you on the upper center edge. I'm placing a piece of soft foam on the painted edge to protect it while I wrap a tie through the mesh and around the frame. I'll make sure to have the head of the tie resting on the back of the mesh for best results. Spacing the ties out a few inches apart will be fine, as generally we don't need them clustered too close together. Repeat this until the top center edge is secured, and then let's move on to a top side area. The same overall principle applies here with tying the mesh on, but since there's a little less real estate available, try to place the ties in the corners so we have plenty of room for adhesives in the next step. As we work our way down the side, the grill will get a little wider, and there might need to be a little planning on where to loop the ties around. The widest part will be on the bottom edge, and this is where you'll need a very long piece of foam and likely need a daisy chain ties together for that temporary hold. I was using two 8 inch ties in this section shown here, and those are a good fit, though be mindful of where the heads of the ties are laying. I suppose that it could be possible to do this lower edge in a single long tie in every spot if you have them available, but odds are you'll need to connect a couple up. To get the edge that's on the divider between the center and the side sections, using the two ties method will get you a pretty good results. Just feed one through the back and one through the front and connect them up so that the head of the tie is resting on the back of at least one of the sections. Also, we want to have these on relatively tight, but don't over tighten any of these so much so that they distort the frame or damage your paint. Once you have all of the ties in place and the mesh is firmly resting on the back edge of the grill opening, then double check your work from the front to make sure that there's no unwanted gaps. If you're satisfied with the placement, then use some wire cutters to trim off the tail ends of the ties and throw them away. When it comes to choosing a glue to bond the mesh and grill together, the two that I can recommend is either Automotive Goop or Plyo Grip Plastic Repair Number 3. Goop will be cheaper but harder to work with, while the Plyo Grip is much more expensive but also a huge time saver. Let me first show you an install using the Goop method. It's really quite simple. You can squeeze the goop right out of the tube and through the mesh where it's making contact with the back side of the grill frame. Now, what you're typically not seeing in these videos is off to the side I have a small fan blowing in this area. The reason I'm doing this is so that the goop won't run down the sides. If you don't have some strong airflow on it, then the adhesive will quickly run down the sides and possibly go into areas that you don't want it to go. This could be really problematic around that tow hook hole or maybe near a mounting tab slot. In short, if you have proper airflow on the grill while using the goop, then it will work just fine. Another drawback to it though is that the goop will take about a full day to cure. If you're using this method, then you'll want to plan on having the grill off of the car while the goop can cure properly. Let's change gears and now show the plyo grip and see how it compares. Once I have the mixing tip screwed on and the cartridge in the dispenser, let's start pumping some of this out. Just like with the goop, get the plyo grip in and around and through the mesh where it's making contact with the back of the grill. Once I have some on the mesh, then I'll grab a small brush and use it to even out the epoxy so we can get good consistent coverage. Moving around to the sides, you can see that I'm not getting up too high on the mesh. I don't want to spill any of this through the front, as that would most definitely be near impossible to clean up. Again, a small brush is a great tool to getting all of this spread around evenly, and I highly recommend using one. These sides by the divider here are much easier to reach when using the plyo grip compared to the goop. Having the mix tube allows me to get in there at a much more manageable angle. The plyo grip only takes 30 minutes to cure, and once everything's all cured up, then I'll come back with some wire cutters. Let's cut off the ties and remove the foam and throw all that away. Our mesh install is now complete. Let's flip this around and see how it turned out. This is looking pretty good. The new mesh is going to give us more protection than the stock grill. The quarter inch hexagons are much smaller openings than what we started with. 
At the same time, the mesh has a 77% open area, so we retain great airflow for cooling. So this is a win-win. Here's some footage on how this looks on the car, and I have to give a big thanks for the YouTube channel Warlord S650 for installing this grill on his Mustang. He's been extremely helpful in the development of this mesh set, ensuring that we have a proper fit. Go check out his channel, which is linked in the description, and show him some love on his videos. Well, that's about all I have for this video. This mesh set install makes for a great weekend project, and I look forward to seeing all the installs from owners. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments or send me an email. And thanks for watching.